Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us tonight in our All About Horses webinar. My name is Emma Bayliss, and I look after equine and competitions at National Office. Joining us tonight, we have Doug Smith, IDA equine lead and regional equine advisor. Doug is going to chat to you about the resources that we have in IDA to assist you in getting your horses ready for restart. Following Dirk, we have Eileen Cornish. Eileen is our new carriage driving lead. Thankfully, in parts of the UK now, carriage driving can finally restart after a long pause in their activity. So Eileen will be talking you through the important things to consider when restarting your driving horses and ponies. Last, but no means least, of course, we have Bethan Randalls. Bethan is centre manager at our IDA National Training Centre. Beth is going to be chatting to you about the importance of good communication between IDA groups and riding schools. We do have a question and answer button. So if you have any questions for our panellists, then pop them on here with your name and your IDA group, and we'll do our best to get through as many as we can. So I think that's enough from me. Let's make a start. Over to you, Doug. Thank you, Emma. Um, yeah, Doug Smith, that's me, National Equine Lead. Um, just to clarify, I am the National Equine Lead, not because I know everything about horses, but because I know enough to know that I don't know everything about horses. The day you think you know everything, go and double your insurance because you're about to have an accident. Um, it's wonderful to see you all here. Um, and it's great that people are using IT, but statistically across the country, 30% of people still don't use IT. Uh, and I would hazard a guess that quite a few of, we've got that sort of percentage within with an RDA. So I'm aware of some groups using a buddy system where they will help out other groups that perhaps don't have access or don't have the, the desire to use IT to pass information on. So please feel free, free to share what you learn this evening. Uh, what you pick up by any means you feel suitable um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Emma and Anna and Marissa and all the staff at National Office for doing a great job um, they get stuff out in a timely manner but not so fast that it's incorrect so thank you ladies um, we're talking about restarting all the protocols and forms are available on the road to restart page on the My RDA UK website. There's lots of wonderful stuff on there, regularly updated. Um, but dare I say, the protocols and equipment are probably the, the easiest part of restarting. Uh, the equines, I think, present us with a whole new raft of problems. But I don't, do like to view everything as an opportunity. So let's use this road to restart as an opportunity to press the reset button to review where we are at the moment and make improvements going forward. Uh, interestingly, just under 50% of groups own or have on loan horses, which equates to a national herd of about just under 1,200 horses. Now, I would suggest that these groups have more control over their readiness for return um, of, to work of their equines because over the last 12 months next week, isn't it? Um, they've been able to monitor the work that the horses are doing. And I know quite a few have put some extra training into the horses, which is wonderful. Um, I would suggest that groups based at riding schools have far less, if any, control um, over the horses being ready for when they, when they come back to work. And I, I'm sure Beth will mention this later, but I believe this necessitates a solid, mutually respectful relationship between the school, because we need to explain why we're doing what we're doing. We have um, a duty of care to our participants and to our volunteers to ensure that, that and of course, health, equine welfare, to ensure that everything um, is right and safe when we restart. So we could work together with the riding schools and hopefully to the benefit of the riding schools because if you get a good relationship with them um, they can see that what we are doing to look at the horses and our participants could conceivably be a benefit to them um, but i do understand after 17 years as a regional and county coach i know that some relationships shall i say are fragile and we do have to be very careful there are lots of resources available to you within RDA. We've got the regional coaches, we've got the regional equine advisors and regional vets. Now, these individuals 
are not to be used as a stick to beat the schools with, but as a resource to help and inform and discuss what we can do and how we can do it. Now, if you don't know who your regional equine advisor or regional coach is, the regional equine advisors, if you look on the, um, the column, the green column on the left of uh, the starting page, you'll see the equine bit and then you'll find the contact details of your regional equine advisors. There are a couple of regions that don't have, for one reason or another, equine advisors. Please feel free to contact neighbouring equine advisors or me. Um, I do get regular phone calls or the lovely Emma. So she will steer you in the right direction. What we do ask or suggest very strongly that groups do, because we have to be able to demonstrate that we've pursued maximum diligence to ensure that everything is safe when we restart. Make use of the equine assessment and induction form, which is on the, the, the road to restart page. If you look again in the green column on the left, get on there, get on the equine, but you can click, click, click and find them. Um, one thing we have to remember is that both horses and riders and participants will have changed physically and perhaps in their emotional approach to what they're doing. And we need to reassess both participants and equines for their suitability. Um, we can't just blithely sort of open the door and say, right, we're going again, we've got to do this properly because this is a foreseeable problem. And insurance companies and solicitors love foreseeable problems. There are some really good resources available on the RDA YouTube channel. If you just type in my RDA, my fingers are working, um, into the search on YouTube for current and previous presentations. Plus there are some excellent presentations by one of our regional vets in Scotland, Tess Fordham. There was a very good one about, on, uh, about obesity, which is, is, is riveting. We're all here to help. We're not here to second guess what you need or what you want to do. We're here to respond. So please do not feel in the least bit reticent about contacting any of us. That's what we're here for. We're here to support and help because RDA has got a rocky road ahead of it to get back to functioning anywhere near where we used to do. We can do it, but we've got to pull together, work together, us, the horses, the participants, the families, the riding schools, everybody. This is going to be a team effort. Thank you for putting up with me. Fantastic, thank you, Dirk. If anybody does have any questions at all for Dirk, then feel free to pop them on the question and answer function, or you can email myself or Dirk. All our details are on the MyRDA website on the equine section. So we're gonna move on now to Eileen Cornish, our new carriage driving lead. Over to you, Eileen. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm your new carriage driving lead. And uh, as it is, I've been 18 days in the job and I am doing my best to try and get everything, um, some of the paperwork and so on up to some standards so that it makes sense for everybody. Um, so we're talking about restarting carriage driving equines, horses, I'm going to call them at the moment. Um, it's not obviously a question of just simply a horse that has been out or out turned out for two years, which some of them have. Um, obviously, just bringing them back, flinging them in a carriage. It's an excellent opportunity to take stock of your best practice for your group and restart your group in a positive way with confident horses and volunteers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before a group starts taking disabled drivers, they need to familiarise themselves and the horses with the routine of their sessions. Each group will work in the same basic safe way, but with variations depending on how and where their group operates. And while this training is going on at the beginning, it's an excellent opportunity to have your trainee coaches getting practical driving experience with double reins and an RDA coach beside them. Quite often, we don't have time in sessions, after sessions, and so this is a golden opportunity to help to train more coaches. Uh, before you begin driving sessions with disabled drivers, 
consult the MyRDA website, Road to Restart section. I'm in the process of amending some of the riding forms so that they are of use for carriage driving groups. Now we're going to the horse. The horse needs to have been in their RDA carriage and harness regularly. Now that instantly causes a problem for Scotland, for instance, because we can't start side by side driving until the 17th of May, as it's considered a contact sport. So no training in a side by side carriage can begin until then. Obviously, if the pony is already in a, um, a different sort of carriage or there's two from the same household, then they can. England can start on the 29th of March, indoors and out. And there are no dates for Northern Ireland or Wales yet, as far as I'm aware. Now, those dates are the first time you can start. But before, until you can actually get your horses and ponies into their carriages, used to absolutely everything, then you cannot just start your group. The horses have to get used to wearing their harness without it rubbing get used to their blinkers restricting their vision. They need to be happy to stand, sorry, they need to be happy to stand to be put to the carriage. Ideally, they need to be schooled back to the level they were before lockdown, or hopefully even a higher standard, you never know. Uh, they need to build up stamina levels for their job. You will need to check the load your horse can pull on your surface and take account of the weight of the carriage and the people on board. And like Doug said, some of the participants will have changed shape, weight, etc. And you've obviously, and, so, and also some of the um, RDA coaches, and you will just have to make sure that these are all okay for the, ho the horse that's put in the carriage. Remember, it's much easier to pull a load on flat tarmac than slippery grass on a slope or a soft surface in an arena. The horse, if, if, you're, if you're a group that drives outside along the roads, the horse needs to drive the routes that they will cover in carriage driving sessions to, to familiarize themselves again with being out in the big wide world again. So you, is that dog still running along the wall at their head height or barking at the gate as the turnout goes past? All of these have, the horse has to get used to. They need to get used to cyclists, head holders, volunteers in all situations. One of our horses that we had in our group was so used to being harnessed up at RDA sessions with several people around him that he looked for others when I did it alone in his role as my competition horse. He obviously thought I wasn't adequate for just doing that. Um, I suggest you run several dummy sessions using the routine that you used previously at disabled driver sessions so that while the horse is gaining confidence after its long break, the volunteers are also refreshing themselves to and building their confidence. It would be good to scrutinize your previous routine to ensure it is still safe, fit for purpose and friendly for all concerned. Remember to fill out the Getting Started Equine Assessment form for carriage driving, which is newly updated. It has sections covering all aspects of a safe return to carriage driving session. It can be signed by either the regional driving rep, if you, the group would like to have some of them go along, or it can be signed by a, an experienced RDA coach, carriage driving coach. And above all, enjoy your safe return to carriage driving sessions. Take it at your group's pace. Don't feel obliged that you have got to start on the date it says. Take it carefully, enjoy it, and make your disabled drivers and volunteers welcome because in this situation when we start you will not be having the group chats and so on as that the, the drivers used to used to love they're going to have to probably come one at a time on a particular time have their drive and then go away home so the social side will have gone for the time being but hopefully in the not too distant future we'll get back to that as well if you've got any questions for me, please feel free to email me or Emma. She, she knows where I am. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Eileen. I certainly think you've uh, been thrown in the deep end coming into this role <laughs> at this point in time. Uh, we did just have a question from Maggie Lewis, but it was just a general question. She was taking notes from your talk and she wanted to know if this session was being recorded. 
Um, yes, it is. Uh, this will be on our YouTube channel in the next few days. If you go onto YouTube and just type my RDA and you will find all the webinars that we've had previously. So thanks for that, Eileen. That was absolutely great. And um, we're going to move on to Beth now. Over to you. Brilliant. Yes. Uh, thank you, Emma. Um, so there is a lot to consider when you begin the road to restart, and it may feel like a bigger project for those that are based at a riding school who hire the horses compared to those who own their own horses and have continued to provide care. You may not have been in contact with the horses for the past year, and you might even have had limited conversations with the equestrian centre that you're based at. Now, the main requirements that groups need to complete, which will involve working alongside your riding school, are the risk assessments or COVID protocols and the equine assessment before you're signed off to restart. But there's certainly more things to consider than just completing the paperwork. At the RDA National Training Centre, uh, we run as a commercial centre and have three resident RDA groups that operate from our facilities and hiring our horses. So we can view this, you know, very much from the riding school's point of view. Um, our priority is that groups should now be starting to come to the centre as there's been so much change. Uh, for one thing, um, I came into post about a week after we went into lockdown um, so they haven't yet met me. Um, although uh, we personally have signed off our horses for sessions, it's also vital that the groups assess the horses themselves as only they know what they are expecting from these horses in sessions. It's worth remembering uh, they haven't done RDA for a year now. Um, they may have been, uh, you know, having riders hop on and go and be very fit and forward, or in contrast, the horses might have been out in the field, um, hanging around with their pals and need easing back into work. I think regardless of what they are doing, the responsibility of the groups is still the same. Have we communicated our horse requirements to the centre? Uh, are the horses fit and healthy? Has the horse received the correct training to be suitable for RDA activities recently? So to overcome these questions, I'd advise that first and foremost, groups strike up a conversation with their riding centres. Personally, uh, we've used this time to retire a lot of old horses um, and bring new horses into training, many of which will not have been in a riding school previously they've not supported our riders. Um, so really communication is key here. Talk with your riding schools to check availability if the arena and horses is still the same. Um, you know, these might have changed in the last year. Have they still got the same sized horses your riders require? If you teach children, have they grown? Um, or, you know, we've all being at home a lot more, it might be that we need to get bigger horses to support the weight of the rider. Don't forget uh, to tell them when you're planning on returning and if you're phasing riders back, when you'll be increasing the level of your sessions and therefore the horses that are needed. The second thing is to gauge what the horses have been doing and their level of fitness. Identify if any of the horses are new, they may need additional training, such as standing at the mountain block or accepting sidewalkers. At this point, the coach should complete the equine assessment form for each horse they are planning to use. It's also worth asking the riding school for an up-to-date records of the horse, so any medical issues or incidents since you were last using them, when the farrier and dentist last came, etc. Um, this is just so that you can be sure that this horse is fit for purpose and ready to resume sessions. Third thing, did we identify any areas where the horse required more training? Um, so after you've completed this, it might be that you discuss with your riding centre when you can come and train the horses. You know uh, this could be uh, the time to, you know, you never know, it could be the time to designate a team to work with the horses or improve their training. If they needed mounting trainer training or they were no longer accepting specialist equipment, the riding school may be happy for you to assist with the horses 
getting them fit um, or you might just go in to do a few hours and recap the RDA specific training with your equines. Um, so the next stage is once the horses are back on form, it's now time to bring your volunteers in. Your volunteers will need refreshing just as much as the horses. Um, they'll need to recap handling the horses, specifically the new processes that are in place when supporting riders. Um, and it's good to replicate these sessions uh, and the format of the sessions and have the horses and the volunteers participate alongside each other before the riders are brought in. This could even be an opportunity for the volunteers to get on board and ride themselves. The idea here is we're easing everyone back into RDA and what's expected of them. So we need to ensure best practice when leading the horses, tacking up um, and all the other scenarios where we're handling them to avoid accidents once the, uh, once the riders are back in. So after all of this, you should now be signed off to start your sessions. Uh, remember that also your riders are likely to have not been near a horse for the past year. They might not be as confident, they might not be as engaged or as strong. So all our riders at the National Training Centre started back with groundwork, a drop-in session to meet their new equine partner, uh, time grooming the horses and even mechanical horse riding sessions to reevaluate the rider's abilities before getting on board. Do you need to ask your riding centre if you could hold a few drop in sessions outside of your normal hours or to build a quiet corner or a specific area where people could be reintroduced to the horses? These pre sessions are a great opportunity to talk through any new booking processes, COVID protocols, or changes to sessions whilst the riders and their support teams are both there. This is also an opportunity to train the support team to assist in the session, um, which might enable more riders to get back on board because obviously they won't have to keep social distancing. Slow and steady is key here. Uh, you might need to hold these sessions more than once or for some participants until the restrictions ease and allows your volunteers to provide the additional support. Um, and last but not least, uh, you've now held your first session back. I think it's really important to stop and communicate. How did that go for everyone? How did the rider feel? How did the volunteers and coaches feel? And uh, how was the horse? Uh, what can we learn or improve on? Uh, were all the COVID procedures up to scratch? Do we need to put in more hand washing facilities or signs? Um, and just kind of stop and reevaluate how everyone's feeling at the end of it. So remember that everyone will be taking this at a different speed. So you may have guessed my biggest bit of advice is to communicate. Lots has changed, so take the time to check in with the four key components in this, the riding school, the horses, the volunteers, and then the riders. Brilliant. So from me, Emma. Thank you, Beth, that was fantastic. We have had a few points raised while we've been talking. Um, Felicity has said that can one of us remind groups that equines will need to get used to volunteers in PPE. We do have a video for this on the My IDA YouTube channel, um, and that shows getting horses used to varying levels of PPE. So have a look at that if you'd like some tips. Um, we've also been asked, will there be some videos on YouTube specific to carriage driving? Eileen, do you think this is something that perhaps we can look to create? Take yourself off mute, Eileen. <laughs> How do I manage? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, it's something I'm, I'll am i put on my to-do list to have a look at and see what we can do, um, because I, there won't be anything, I probably won't be anything actually in RDA at the moment, I don't think, but we can pull them in from elsewhere. Fantastic, thank you. We have also had um, another great point raised by Frances Lockrain from Lambourne. She said that their horses didn't like the smell of alcohol hand gel, and it took quite a while to desensitise them to that, so that's something else to obviously bear in mind. Dirk, we've got a query for you from um, Ines Mon, RDA in Anglesey. 
Uh, one of their horses has lost its sight now in one eye during this year of lockdown. They have worked with the horse and the lack of sight hasn't been an issue for non-RDA riders. Can this horse still be passed for RDA work, obviously following a new assessment? If I may, Emma, um, it wouldn't be the first. I am aware of other groups uh, over the years that have had horses with visual problems. Um, I would just suggest that whoever does the assessment, that is, it is an exhaustive assessment. Um, and it, I, I would suggest that it would only be used indoors. Okay, thank you. I've got another one here for you, Doug. Um, from Olivia Healing, should the maximum riding weight for an RDA horse be lowered as riders have not had physio or exercise or be less stable and fit? Bearing in mind, most RDA horses haven't had unstable riders on board for at least a year. Again, if I may, um, Beth, I must compliment you very, I thought it was going to be good and it was excellent. That covers everything. This is why I was quite vague at the start. Um, yeah, th this is going to be a not uncommon problem um, and this is where it falls on the groups to be ultra ultra careful this is a reset button and it gives us chance to ensure as Arlen says that going forward we're at least as good as if not better so we've got to ensure horses are up to the job mentally and physically weighing them is going to be um, important doing um, um, a condition score again is going to be important it might be just a quick visual condition score but uh, I'm sure there's every group's got at least one person that can cast an eye over a horse and say yeah you're looking a bit well or you're looking a bit lean so we've got to take all these things into consideration the, I've got a few mantras if it looks wrong it probably is and if in doubt don't do it uh, because we've got to, we've got to be very very careful here. Thank you, Doug. And, and like Doug did mention earlier, don't forget as well you have your regional equine advisors and your regional vets all on hand if you've got any questions. You can find all their details on the My RDA website under the equine section. They're on the right hand side at the very bottom of the resources list. If anybody's got any more questions as well for either myself, Doug, Eileen, or Beth please feel free to email National Office and we can point you in the right direction. We just had one more question come in here. Uh, for you, Eileen, we carriage driving, there is a lot of concern about driving groups restarting due to the inability to socially distance. They are struggling to see how they can do it safely. And that's from Francis Lochrane in the South region. Yeah, this is, this is a real, real biggie. Um, Scotland, as I say, has, has put in a thing where we are a contact sport. It's not in any of the other guidelines for England or, well, Wales and Ireland are still on lockdown anyway. But uh, it is a problem. Um, we can't use shields on uh, attached to hats to come down in front of the face. Um, I think it's going to be eventually how the... Um, RDA coach, how the group themselves feel about it. I think it's going to be a long, slow start, unfortunately. Um, if they're sitting side by side to train the horse, then you can both wear masks. And if you can wear a mask, I actually can't. I have to wear a screen because, a shield because I can't breathe with a mask on because I've got asthma. But um, if, you, if you can both wear masks, then obviously that's going to cut down. And if you are training side by side, you can then face forward. The problem with um, sitting side by side with a disabled driver is that you spend most of your time actually sitting sideways. Well, you might sit forward, but you face forward. Uh, sorry, your body might be forward, but you face to the to your to your right hand side because you're watching. You're watching the pony, you're watching the road, you're watching the cyclist, and more than anything, you're watching your disabled driver to see uh, what they're going to do next. I mean, we had, I had one in my, in my group that used to sort of say, well, fling the reins at me and say, I'm getting out now. Well, we could be trotting somewhere, and you, you know, this sort of thing. You've got to really be, and some of them will lip read, some will, you'll have to keep watching their 
eyes. We've got one, we have one or two in the north of Scotland who only um, blinked or whatever. So that obviously is, is going to be the the, amb the non ambulance going to be difficult anyway. The ambulance, I think, is I think it's just going to be a long, long, slow start until the um, volunteers feel okay, and until really, I think probably the government takes some of the some of the um, restrictions off because. The social distance distancing in a carriage um you can't move because you've got two you know the two seats are fixed um so you can't get anywhere you can't not face you you have to face sideways you can't always face forwards and so yes it's going to be a question of just as i say taking it slow steady um eventually you hope that everybody's had their vaccine the vaccination sorry not vaccines that's horses uh, vaccinations um, but not everybody necessarily will. Not all the particip participants can. Not all the um, RDA coaches can for any for, or won't for some reason. And you're not allowed to, as part of the um, getting back into it. You're not allowed to actually visit, ask people whether they have got um, had their vaccination. So I think the whole thing is um, it's it's quite fraught with difficulties. And as I say, I think my answer is slowly slowly and do what your group feel is right if you've got any particular things you want to ask me then just email me and i can send you things that i've got so far and the, the rda carriage driving protocol is actually being um updated as we speak so that will help and that will come out to groups as soon as it's ready just I thank you eileen just to add to that the the protocols that we do have in place for carriage driving were worked on with ourselves at National Office and the Carriage Driving Committee, um, alongside Horse Scotland, Sport England, Activity Alliance and, and various other governing bodies before they were sent to the government in England to be approved. So these protocols that we have for carriage driving have now been approved. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of things that carriage driving groups can do if they're not comfortable with driving yet, including long lining, quiet corners, etc. getting your drivers back. I think the main thing here is if you don't feel comfortable starting driving yet, then, then please don't feel any pressure to do that. Would you agree with that, Eileen? Absolutely, yes. I think there's another question just come in as well from Francis Lochran. Are you planning? Are we, are we planning a C, uh, carriage driving webinar? Did you not see? I think we are, are we not? I, I think I heard <laughs> something about that. Yeah, I think watch this space, you know, as, as things start up again, obviously it brings up issues that, that we need to tackle and, and talk to people about. So um, we'll have a chat with Eileen about that and hopefully we can put something in place. I think that's it now for the questions. Can't see any more coming in. If anybody does think of anything, um, then just drop myself, Doug, Eileen or Beth an email um, and hopefully we'll be able to answer that for you and get back to you. Thanks so much to the panellists and thanks everybody for watching as well. Good night.